हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज जिमी सिंह ब्रोकर ओनर ऑफ सुपरमैक्स रियल्टी सिक्स फोर सेवन नाइन सिक्स वन टू सिक्स थ्री नाइन वेलकम टू माय चैनल रियल स्टेट एज विद जिमी सिंह इन टुडेज वीडियो आई लाइक टू टॉक अबाउट हाउसिंग इन कनाडा एंड हाउसिंग सटनली इज अ हॉट टॉपिक इन द इलेक्शन ईयर ट्वेंटी एंड ऑल द डिफरेंट कनेडियन पार्टीज लिबरल्स conservatives and dp they are coming with all different action plans so we want to see you know in this short video what are the things that they can implement uh, certainly uh, to increase supply in the marketplace and stabilize the pricing so if we study history of canada uh, especially you know you study back to great depression second world war in 1960s 1970s federal government implemented a national social housing and created uh, you know on average 20 to 30000 homes uh, for affordable purposes and until 1990s they made approximately 550000 non market social housing and suddenly after that federal government stopped funding uh, these housings and uh, they just passed on this responsibility to province and municipalities uh, and not enough funds were allocated over the past 30 years so what happened over the years you know some of these properties went into disrepair and municipalities like toronto and smaller cities like hamilton london and some other uh, cities uh, in south western ontario or canada these properties come into disrepair and suddenly they started get ridding of some of these properties and some of the big investments and uh, pension funds they start buying these ones repairing it increasing the market value or rents and uh, keeping this for investment purposes however in nine in 2017 justin trudeau from liberal party he came up with nhs which is national housing uh, you know strategy to make sure you know he allocate 70 billion dollars in the housing over next 10 years and since 2017 uh, they said 63300 units were built which are still very short and uh, some stats were you know projecting that in coming years 1.8 million people will be needing housing so we are way behind uh, you know the supply uh, if we talk about smaller town cities like london for example uh, international student uh, is are coming in greater flow so if we see east london area in last 5 years alone 6000 international students have enrolled into different programs in london and as a result a lot of investors are buying properties to put four to five students in a house uh, to create more affordability right so i don't blame international students uh, for the housing crisis uh, at the end i believe uh, this onus falls on the university or the city maybe they have a some kind of uh, you know profit sharing program with the federal government to take care of students so if you go to even downtown toronto you go to mackel in uh, uh, you know in canada or all the big towns waterloo kitchener so most of the student rentals uh, units are investor owned just like small mom and pop they buy small condos rent uh, sometime put one of their kids there and put other students in there just to you know uh, make sure their study is paid off down the line so government has to you know seriously consider the shortfall it has created in past 10 to 20 years we have seen the ripple effect down the line other thing i like to talk about is you know especially in covid pandemic we have seen a big gap between you know have and have nots so the gap keep increasing you know it's very disheartening to see especially the younger generation their dream of housing ownership is out of windows a lot of people you know just give up they just throw up they said you know what we're going to be renting for next 20 30 years in our life we can't be able to save the money and other thing like to talk about is especially senior housing 
I work with a lot of clients who are looking to downsize in Greater Toronto Area, Golden Horseshoe, London, Kitchener, Waterloo. So what I find is uh, these people are close to retirement. They live in a bigger detached property, uh, probably four to five bedrooms. And uh, at the end of the day, there's no uh, good uh, senior housing. So what they're looking is not a tall skyscraper 50 story with a five, 600 square feet units. They're looking for decent 12, 13, 1400 square feet unit. Uh, maybe mid-rise four to five stories so at least they can make a move and bring that supply on the market so they can sell their bigger property so the next generation can move into it or next thing they can do is maybe government can incentivize these people to finish their basement and uh, depending on the area uh, you know go through zoning process which would make it easier so they can rent the basement units further increasing the supply in the marketplace so the rents don't skyrocket. Obviously, as a real estate agent and broker, I'm happy that housing affordability is top of most political parties' mind in this year because in last election, it's all about jobs. And in this election, they're all talking about housing in pandemic. And uh, Last quarter in 2021, uh, earlier this year, there was a stat saying 10 per, more than 10% of Canadian GDP depend on housing and the manufacturing actually was less than the housing, right? So we have to really see where the priority lies in future and to keep the home ownership dream alive, government should make it easy, especially for the first time buyers to own and increase the supply and reduce rep tapism in municipalities to open different green belts or different areas where you know uh, builders can make, make missing middle units or affordable units where families can raise the kids. And uh, other thing I like to talk about is different plans, what the different parties are saying. So let's start with Liberal Party, the biggest party here. So they're saying they are Number one, going with a home buyer's assistant plan where, uh, you know, they have a tax sheltered account, just like RSP, they have a certain account where first time buyers under the age 40 years, they can put 40,000 in there tax free. So whatever money they make, they put up to 40,000 with no tax implication and they can draw and apply towards the down payment of the house. And the reason they chose 40,000 is the average Canadian house is $750,000. So they figure out 5% down, uh, saving is 40,000. And rest, the CMHC has certain programs where government can give extra 5% towards uh, their home purchase. Uh, that is a CMHC program. So they can, you know, more first time buyers can buy the house. So what happened to people over 40 who haven't bought the house? Only God knows, maybe in the coming days, they will clarify other policies as well. Second thing they discuss Liberal government is they are coming up with, you know, temporary ban on all the flipping of the houses and, uh, you know, blind bidding. So they are focusing on those things. They want to make sure people who flip the properties, maybe investor who buy uh, and then rehab and sell the house, they have to keep the house for minimum 12 months. That's what they want. And uh, they can give certain, they have give, provided certain exemptions, maybe if somebody has a loss in the family, they lost the job or somebody is pregnant or they have to relocate. So in those special circumstances, there is exception, but they want people to hold the property for 12 years uh, to over 12 months. Otherwise, they have to pay bigger amount of taxes. Third thing they came up is what we call additional rights to home buyers under the right bills. So what they include is mandatory home inspection of the property. So the property buyers are buying in the heat of the moment. Uh, they do the due diligence and make sure the property is sound. That is number one thing. Second thing is they want to make sure uh, there is transparency in the bidding. So folks, if you follow my channel, Real Estate Edge with Jimmy Singh, all along last year, 2021, I keep talking about, you know, transparency in bidding because I see this in marketplace as an active agent that it's very hard to know what the second first person is offering 
and sometimes I have seen as a listing agent the, the first bid and second bid has a huge gap, maybe 40,000, 50,000. And some of my friends, they say sometime in luxury homes, they have seen 200, 300,000 gap between first and second offer, right? So what everybody talks about is housing open bidding just like they in Australia. So in Australia, what they do is bidders come on the street and let's say I'm the real estate agent, I come with my buyers, some other buyer bring their own agents everybody starts on the street and they start bidding just like if you see uh, tiffany's or other big uh, auction firms which sell luxury uh, items or cars so people know what the other person is offering so let's say a house is worth nine hundred thousand. somebody bid 920 so if i really want a house i have to beat him five or ten thousand whatever his best bid is to get it instead of bidding million or 1.1 right so that is actually a very very good initiative i'm all for it and right now, you know, a lot of people saying agents are not transparent. Guys, under Real Estate Council of Ontario, we are supposed to keep all paperwork. And if both the sellers and buyer wants, they have to give us written permission so we can disclose the price and terms. But if they don't give us permission, we are, you know, tied by law not to disclose, right? But that is a very good initiative. I'm all for it. I'm all for transparency. Fourth point they're talking about is making sure, uh, you know, uh, house, uh, affordable housing uh, grants will be provided to different builders to make sure, you know, they have incentive and they work along with the government. So in next uh, few years, four years, they intend to rehab and make approximately 1.4 million housing available to average Canadians. So that is the liberal government's plan and uh, conservative have similar kind of plan. We will come to that. Fifth point, uh, guys, is called foreign home buyer freeze. So what liberal government is saying is if they come to power for next two years, they will ban foreign home buying and uh, as well, they will tax uh, vacant housing in the Canadian marketplace. Right. So the goal is to free up the properties, elevate, you know, price escalations in bigger cities, especially Toronto, Vancouver, and uh, they believe the house should be are used as a, not a commodity but a place to live in right but here uh, i like to tell one thing government like to paint you know foreigners or you know these investors as a boogeyman or the bad guys but i have a simple question in pandemic 2020 with international borders closed there was no foreigners coming to canada but still houses in let's say Windsor, they are up 36 person in London, they are up 26 to 30 person in Toronto, 20 person Brampton, Mississauga. So these are all local people seeking listings, but housing is becoming not only necessity, a human right. So at the end of the day, if there's no new supply in greater Toronto area, 70 percent new homes built are condominiums. And in COVID, lot of people are just leaving big cities because you know they have a uh, fear that uh, stuck in that uh, you know elevator with 20 other people and they are they need a breathing space and the, though some of the units average are catered to the investors which they are producing at the price of 450 556 they are like micro units you can't raise a family so they really have to guys uh, re-strategize government has to sit with the builders incentivize and if they're paying too much levies to municipalities uh, and development charges, they have to subsidize them and give them a tax break to make sure, you know, uh, average Canadian can live a happy life. So that is number one thing. And what they do is, you know, to uh, because people like to blame, like so to instead of getting blame from, you know, ordinary public, they just simply blame the third person, which is foreign buyer. And study after study says in Greater Toronto area, especially Toronto, less than five percent units or five to six percent units are foreign owned the rest are all private investors from toronto simple families like you and me who want to you know go forward uh, you know make sure our you know pension fund if getting shortfall we at least have one property for our retirement right so that is a key put freeze for two years for foreign buyers so canadian have a, a go to own a house and that's a good uh, thing other uh, you know, point they're talking about is mortgage transparency. They want to make sure all the lenders disclose to their clients that what are the different options available as far as the financing. 
and at the end of the day they want uh, real estate agents to disclose uh, multiple representation meaning if they are on the both side of the deal so let's say agent represent a seller and if he has a direct buyer at the same time they want you know more clear uh, you know disclosures one thing i can tell you friends is these disclosures are still in place under real estate council they are very very strict and there are certain guidelines we have to follow and we need written permission from both sellers and buyers uh, to guide them properly so if you don't do that uh, agents in ontario especially can get penalized uh, i'm sure you know same kind of policy exists in vancouver and calgary and other uh, parts of canada as well a uh, sixth point they talk about is rent to own option so what the liberal government is saying you know with the partnership with the different landlords they want uh, you know tenants to be charged below market rent and help them build extra equity or down payment so at a predetermined you know uh, price now they can purchase in future 5 years from now so there are certain program already exist in toronto and uh, traditionally uh, what happen is individual commit to renting for a certain period of time with the option to buy uh, at a locked price so let's say you know the deal they sign now they sign a lease they sign a purchase agreement with certain price that i'm going to buy your house at this price 5 years from now so the good part for tenant is they lock the price and uh, you know but in traditionally the landlords charge above market rent so certain portion is applied to their down payment and help them qualify down the line so if you want more uh, information about these programs in greater toronto area your first time buyer with low down payment give team supermax a call we can discuss more about it and but make sure when you do these kind of rent to own options there are good companies and then there's not good companies some companies deliberately want you to fail so they can keep all your deposit and option money so always go through these uh, legal documentation with a knowledgeable lawyer or real estate professional to guide you properly and the last point they were also saying is reduce mortgage cost so what they're saying is they want cmhc to cut down the insurance premium 25% so what happen is typically in canada if you're looking to buy a property less than 20% down there's a insurance premium it can be as high as 4% uh maybe up to $30,000 which is added on top of your mortgage spread over the uh, amortize over like 25 years right so they just want a little bit more savings for the uh you know first time buyers and they also want to increase the insured mortgage from 1 million to 1.25 because technically if you're in toronto area a 1 million won't take you far because in brampton you can only buy town houses or semis for 1 million yes there are some pockets you can buy detached but so they increase from 1 million to 1.25 for insured mortgages meaning if you're buying a house more than 1 million dollars you have to have 20% down not to have a insured mortgage but if you're buying for 999000 maybe little 1 dollar less than million dollars you need cmhc genworth or canada guarantee insured product for that you have to pay up to 4% of the purchase price so they're trying to reduce a certain things and obviously uh typically uh, in, uh you know the politicians like to ma make big tall promises so there are certain good parts in pretty much all the parties and there's a lot of smoke and mirror just to make public feel good about themselves so they can create more vote bank so let's talk about uh now uh conservative party so conservative party uh, basically is also working to make mortgage more affordable and make it ease for typical people to secure the funding so what they're proposing is they want longer terms meaning 7 to 10 year instead of traditional 2 to 5 year term with the bank so what they're saying is your interest is locked during the term maybe your term is 10 years so bank give you less than 3% interest it is locked for 10 years that way at least you know what your monthly mortgage payment is for 10 years i think that is a good idea there are certain products that exist in united states so where basically for 20 years 15 years your you know payment remains the same and i think that is very good why it takes the uncertainty out uh, what your monthly payment would be for the next 10 years so people can plan accordingly and the other thing is then you don't have to go to stress test 
Trust as meaning, let's say you want to secure us funding today in Canada. So let's say the interest rate you can get for a five year term is 2.7%, but bank will stress test you based on 5.25% to make sure if the interest goes up, you don't default on the mortgage, right? And if they do that, that they increase the terms, then you don't need, uh, you know, there's no uncertainty, then they don't have to have a stress test. So they wanna either, you know, make it easier, especially for self-employed or gig economy workers who were impacted uh, during pandemic. So that is a good thing. I, I, I think that's a good start. Other thing on it, uh, they are doing conservative is proposed two year ban on foreign buyers to acquire residential real estate if they don't live in Canada. So that is, uh, they don't want uh, foreigners to commoditize our real estate. Third thing is they want to build one million houses, one million houses over the next three years. Uh, again, you know, that's a, that's a tall claim. Because let's say if you live in Toronto, where one side, uh, they're pretty much landlocked. One side is uh, uh, your lake and other side is green belt. If you even go to Niagara Escarpment, so a lot of land is just, you know, controlled by the government. And then they want to open up some land because right now in Greater Toronto area, everything is vertical, right? So they are making high rise buildings. So even, you know, uh, average condo takes five years to build. And with zoning uh, permissions, ministry approvals, and natural resources, it takes few years for a developer to develop the land and sell it to the builder. So they have to fasten the process to make sure uh, if they have a tall, uh, you know, promise or they have a tall uh, goal of attracting 1.2 million immigrants in the next four years, they want to make sure, you know, if those people come up in GTA, because typically, Immigrants come to the main four or five cities in Canada, which are just beside uh, US border. So they want to make sure uh, those houses are available because one point, uh, let's say 150,000 immigrants come on in Greater Toronto area and uh, average, uh, let's say population of London is like 400,000. So they need to create, you know, one London every four years close to GTA just to absorb. Otherwise, uh, with, the, with the rental prices, basement rentals, uh, lack of shortage is going to keep continuing guys. So if somebody is waiting for a crash, I don't see crash coming until government come up with a policy to cool the prices. Then they want to give a tax break, uh, you know, uh, to a lot of developers to make rental only buildings and uh, which come under rent control. So, you know, that is very, very important. Why? Uh, uh, liberal government is also talking about renovation, renovation meaning uh, big firms come up by an old property or a multi-unit apartment building. They kick out the old tenants who have been sitting for the last 15 years because that building was built prior to November 2018. So those people were paying rents like for the last 15 years pretty much the same. And rents have skyrocketed. So what they do is they give them a notice, I'm going to renovate the building, kick them out and then put new tenants at way higher rent. So that they want to control and they said they want the owner of the building to file their pre and after taxes to show that the rents remain the same. Again, that is a good thing. I think, you know, there has to be balance, you know, profit and, uh, you know, social thinking both go hand in hand. So we have to, you know, think about that social responsibility and greed and profit has to basically balance for us to succeed. Then they're thinking of switching 15% of federal owned real estate housing uh, towards, uh, which is unused and they have a lot of offices. They want to convert those offices as a rental as well. Uh, you know, same like a few years back when Calgary market was hit real bad, people are living downtown, their offices were vacant. Some of the companies came, converted the offices to uh, housing because there are a lot of people who can't afford expensive. So there's a lot of good things and some are very utopian, you know, high ideas. It seems, uh, you know, everybody wants to secure vote right now and they want to please and say what you want to hear. Lastly, let's talk about NDP. So NDP says they're going to increase the insured mortgage up to 30 years instead of 25 years. So they want to stretch your payments for over course of 30 years, your loan. So that way, initially your uh, mortgage uh, is less. Uh, that is a good thing and at the same time uh, for most people it is not a good thing because you'll be stuck with the same lender paying more interest over a course of 30 years. 
so if you haven't watched my video how to pay your mortgage 10 to 15 years earlier go to my channel real estate edge with jimmy singh watch the video so what i propose is when your family is growing you might have little less income keep long 30 year when your income grows uh, call your bank reduce the amortization you don't have to stick to 25 years tell them you want to shorten to 20 15 years they can crunch some numbers and help you out so that is what ndp wants and that is a good thing and uh, other thing they are uh, proposing is to build half a million affordable homes in next 10 years meaning they want to break down 250,000 units in first five years and then if they get elected they want to do more and they want to provide extra funding to co-op and uh, those social housing needs to different municipalities or cities across Canada. Then uh, lastly I want to talk about uh, a survey done recently by uh, Generation Squeeze. Uh, it is a housing affordability research group which score all these political parties based on 16 different dimension or criteria uh, of their policies and they score differently. So Liberal Party has a score of 10.5% according to them. Conservative has a score of 4 out of 16. NDP has 5.5 and Green Party has 6. So only guys, time will tell how the promises will hold. Uh, but uh, no party till now propose any change how they can stall ever growing par uh, prices in the marketplace. Nobody has any plan. So at least it gave a breathing space for Canadian so income can catch up uh, to the house prices. So can any party fix housing crisis in Canada? Only time will tell. Other thing I like to do is guys, you know, you look around the world, see uh, any any country in the world, nobody is happy with the government, whatever you know their policies are. Everybody wants a change. At the end of the day, I just say everybody don't count on the government. You have to take care of your own life. And this is the reason a lot of financial planners over the years I met, they are telling their clients to take some money from the savings, invest in a real estate. You know, they do invest in stocks, bonds and other vehicles. But real estate is a part of portfolio for most wealthy individuals in Canada, right? So vote for a party, folks, which you believe will bring best for your future, which interfere very less in your life so you can succeed and which promote prosperity, unity and integrity in the country. And uh, as I said, you know, these are all the promises. And I have a question to all these parties. You were in power in different provinces for last 15 years. You never did anything and at this point of time we are in this situation. So anyways guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you are enjoying beautiful weather before the fall market hits. And uh, I wish, hope and pray, good luck, success and prosperity. May COVID go away fast so we can move on with our lives. Again, this is Jimmy Singh. I am the broker, owner of Supermax. My team uh, service Greater Toronto Area, Golden Horseshoe. Kitchener Waterloo, London, Windsor areas. So if you're in a marketplace to buy, sell or invest in real estate, give me a call. I've been investing personally and helping my clients for the last 15 years. Or if you're a brand new agent looking to start real estate profession, want mentorship, counseling and guidance, give me a call for no obligation 647-961-2639. Thanks for watching. God bless you.